Griswold? Hundred, maybe? Could be. Maybe somebody's in trouble. far from it. We'll have to do whatever we can. Oh, please. Please, please. One last turn, then tire off. Yes, sir. Oh, shoot. I'll shoot you again. Don't you fret about it, none. Please, don't shoot. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, don't. Got a tight offering? It's fine, Mr. Griswold. Sure out of his head, ain't he? He sure is. You skedaddle on back. Tell Mr. Griswold I'm bringing him in. to tell you he's bringing in a feller's been shot. How bad? Oh, real bad. He's out of his head. We know him? No, some stranger. Where was he hit? Here in the leg and up here in the back. 
He's too bad hurt to ride. We got him on a Travi. You want me to fetch the doc? We're not going to pay a doctor till I know we need him. You go on back and give Mr. Griswold a hand. Yes, ma'am. You men, fetch me some water from the well. Leave that be, Julia. I thought you wanted this sourdough ready for the drive. It will be. Your pa's bringing in the man who's been shot. Who is he? I don't know. We'll put him in your room. My room? Last I heard, we don't have a hotel here. You can bed down the sitting room. Oh, uh, get those bandages we rolled out of the whole chest. Suppose he dies. In my bed, Ma. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't turn queasy on me. Fever. Julia, get me some water. From the bunkhouse pump, it's colder. Should have some kind of identification. An awful lot of money. Joseph Cartwright, on behalf of Benjamin Cartwright. Dated June 12, 1869. Virginia City. He's gonna need the doctor. Send one of the men into Lodge Pine. I'll have him tell Sheriff Truslow, too. Here, tuck this away someplace safe. Oh, Don't say nothing about it. You better wire his kin in Virginia City. Yeah. Back kind of early, ain't you? Where's the supply wagon? I left it in Virginia City with Bates. Thought I'd better get here as soon as possible. Well, it's made of trouble sometimes. I don't know, Mr. Cartwright. Telegraph agent stopped me and said he had a wire from the ranch down in Lone Pine. That's right near where Joe is. Yes, sir. He said I ought to get that to you as fast as I could. Boss! Settle our horses. Two days' supplies and kill you. Yes, sir. Griswold said you'd probably be along. I'm to show you a shortcut. How's my son? Well, Doc was working on him when I left, but I've been out here better than two hours. Let's now. ride. Hot up. His dad and his brother. How's his condition, Doctor? It's serious, Mr. Cartwright. his leg. There's another one in his back that's causing the infection. I'm, I'm afraid if I probe too near the chest cavity in his present condition, it might kill him. We'll just have to wait and see. He, uh, 
He had this on him. Uh, this is just the way we found it. We figured that's probably why he got shot. Does the sheriff know about this? He's the only one I told. I wonder why anybody would want to kill him. You'd, uh, you'd better leave me alone with him now. It's all right, son. We're with you now. Do you know who shot you? I'm too tired. Think about it real hard. Think about it. Where we found your son, Mr. Cartwright. It's government land, open grazing. Uh, whose ranchers are these? Oh, mine, Ed Flanders, Bill Steens, a couple of others. Are all those fellers outside right now? Not all of them, but they will be by dark. We're moving out on a community cattle drive in the morning. We're headquartering here. Now, you questioned the men outside. No, I didn't see any need. Why not? Well, they'd have come talk to me if they had seen anything out of the ordinary. Did you look? No. Tom told me there wasn't much to see. Looks to me like nothing much of anything's been done. That's not entirely true. I've been looking for reasons for the shooting. You have any luck? First, let me ask you, did he have any enemies? No. Are you sure? Positive. None. Well, then he could have had some trouble with that business deal. No, it was a straightforward deal. He sold some horses to the army, got paid in cash, and was on his way home. And the way I see it, 
Could have been an accident, somebody out hunting. Accidentally shot twice. Well, he could have been shot by mistake. Somebody out gunning for somebody else. Who? Well, I don't know. There hadn't been any feuding going on around here. No bad arguments, Tom. We all get along just fine around here. Well, where are we? Oh, it's just about the same. Julie, you go sit with him. Dr. Scully might need you. Ma, I haven't changed the dishes yet. Oh, well, your ears must have gotten in the way of your hands. Now, get along. What it boils down to, Sheriff, is that all this time has gone by and you haven't done anything. Oh, now, hold on. I figured that you were coming, so I waited to talk with you. Well, you've talked to us. Well, now I'll wait till your son comes around and I'll talk to him. Sheriff, that may not be for some time. And meanwhile, whoever it was that shot him isn't going to be riding in here with a sign across his chest saying, I shot Joe Cartwright. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to be badgered by you, that's for sure. Well, so I'm going to have a word with Dr. Scudder, then I'll talk to the men outside. Uh, Mr. Griswold, would you have time to show Hoss where you found Joe? Well, we were going to move out to the drive camp before dark, but... Oh, I'll see the supplies are loaded. You'll have time. Thank you. No, uh, no great change. His fever's up a bit, but that was predictable. I'm just checking to see if I have what I might need. Nothing will be done without your knowledge and consent. Do you expect the fever to go any higher? I do. But how soon and how much, I can't say. The bullet may be the sole cause of the infection, but bits of cloth or dirt or both may have been driven into the wound, adding to the problem. You're wondering about my competence. In your position, if it were my son with a bullet in his back, I'd wonder too. I wish I could call in another doctor for consultation, but there's not one available. Will this do? Yes, yes, that'll do nicely. Now, I'd like you to fill that with water, put it on the stove, and let it boil for at least 30 minutes. Then empty it out and bring it back to me. Empty it out? Yes. Uh, be sure not to touch the inside of the basin. Oh, very well. Thank you. I have the usual diplomas on my office wall, but a diploma will only tell you what school a man's attended. Are you a surgeon? I am. I was a surgeon with the Union Army. I served at Gettysburg in the field hospital. Once, Mr. Cartwright, I operated 48 hours without stopping. All gunshot wounds, just about every kind you could imagine. You're very well qualified, Doctor. Thank you for telling me. Excuse me.
been a horse much like this one, but he was riding a good way off. Well, was there anybody else around? None that I could see, no. But there are a few draws where someone else could have been. Did you hear any shots? None. But I was over in Wet Meadow when I saw this rider. That's a good six, seven miles from where your son was found. Well, what do you think of that? They'll do. But we'll need about ten more head. Well, you have by mid-afternoon tomorrow, Jim. Fins bring them All right, come give me a hand with the supply wagon, Tally. Sure. Ed, Orv, can you hold up a minute? This is Ben Cartwright. Man whose son was shot. Ed Flanders, Orv Pettis. Hi. Sorry about your boy, Mr. Cartwright. Thanks. Look for some information. Might be of some help. If I'd have had any, you'd have had it by now. Why? Well, something you might have seen or heard. Some little thing, maybe. The big thing, Mr. Cartwright, is I haven't seen any strangers around. I haven't either, Mr. Cartwright. Well, doesn't have to be a stranger. It could be anybody. The people around here are all good, solid men. No need for you to question any of us. Well, somebody bushwhacked my boy. And I hope you find out who did it. But a man who's got his son's maybe dying, he can go off half-cocked. You just see your gun ain't pointing in the wrong direction. I guess maybe you had a good reason for being so hard-nosed, Mr. Cartwright. Ed Flanders had a son, 19. Gunned down by a man whose brother had been robbed and killed. Ed's son wasn't guilty. These tracks here is me and Aaron coming up, and this is where we found your brother laying. Really? Sure fired lots of ammunition. Just wonder if somebody didn't hear it. Not too many passed this way. You did. Well, we was just out looking for strays for the drive, but we might not have come this way for six or eight months. Yeah. Mr. Griswold, you see it's just you and another fella? That's right. The news tracks are these. I'll try. I'll try. Julia, ask Mr. Cartwright to come in, please, and get some more cold water. Is he going to die? Julia, please go.
is dangerously high. The bullet will have to come out. You said probing for the bullet could be dangerous. If the bullet is too deep into the chest cavity, it could be fatal. Well, isn't there some way of getting the fever down without removing the bullet? He's young and strong. It's possible his body might be able to overcome it. But you don't think so? I believe the odds are gravely against it. The bullet you took out of his leg. How deeply did that penetrate? Well, not, not too deep, but it came to rest against a bone. May I see it? The tip isn't flattened. And that could mean that Joe was shot from long range. Maybe the bullets were almost spent when they hit him. Well, if, if that's true, then it might mean the bullet in his back didn't go too deeply. But there's no way of knowing until you start a probe. No. You know the risks involved. If you want me to operate, I'll have to have your permission. This, this bullet didn't penetrate too deeply. Maybe we'll be lucky again. You have my permission. Sure you got a stranger here, got bushwhacked? Sure is. How bad hurt is he? Pretty bad. Doc's still with him. That's his pal over there.
Might as well do. Well, the doctor's operating on him now. We just have to wait. You find out anything? Well, we saw some new tracks. It was like a couple of horses. Looks to me like somebody been nosing around out here after Griswold and brought Joe in. We tried to backtrack it, but lost it. You know what I think? If you bushwhacked somebody, you might just want to come back and look around just to be sure. But not if you're a stranger. A stranger wouldn't hang around. I sure would hate to think it might be a neighbor of mine. Sheriff. Sheriff, do you have a hunting pack? You want to use dogs, huh? Yeah, we could put them on that back trail. Huey Woodson's got a pack. I don't know. A cold trail like that might be a waste of time. Looks to me like enough time has been wasted already around here. You know, a little effort on your part wouldn't hurt nothing. It's sure worth a try, Sheriff. Mr. Cartwright, Dr. Scully wants to see you. Yes, Doctor. You were right, Mr. Cartwright. It wasn't very deep. And now? Now it's up to your son. Could I see him? All right, just for a minute. Thank you. Cartwright, I have to be leaving for a while. Oh? Well, it's a matter of saving a mother and a child. Oh, yes, well, uh, when do you think you'll be back? I'll be back as soon as possible. I've given Mrs. Griswold all the instructions necessary. Seem kind of foolish now. I'm telling you, you're not going to accomplish nothing. Somebody bushwhacked my boy. I'm going to find out who and why. Me and Mr. Cartwright, we're riding out to where we picked up the son. Now, Bob, I want you to go to Huey's, pick up them dogs, and you meet them there. All right, if you all say so. Come in. Stubborn men, the Cartwrights. Plain foolish, I calls it. Well, I side with Ed here. They ain't gonna do no good with them dogs. 
Well, there's something to be admired in the way they protect their kin. Well, that's their business. We got our own work to do. Let's get to the drive camp. Whoever's out in the South Fork picking up strays. I'll go down and join him and meet you there. All right, you men. Let's move on. your son, Mr. Cartwright. Sheriff, I'd be along any time now. Thank you very much. Well, I better get to the drive camp. Oh, this pouch belongs to the sheriff. I wonder if you'd mind giving it to him for me. Mr. Griswold? It's your brand, right? Yeah. T for Tom, P for Pat. <laughs> My wife and I, we got it registered when we got married. The, the teepee. Yeah. Teepee. That's what Joe keeps saying over and over again. Teepee. Teepee and uh, wagon wheel. Wagon wheel. You a ranch around here with a wagon wheel brand? Yeah. Orv Pettis and Jim Fenton. They got the wagon wheel brand. They moved out. All of them? All of them but the big card, right? He's still there. Be dark soon. Don't give us much time. It's your teepee brand. Yeah? Yeah. Some care and a good hot running iron. You make a wagon wheel out of your teepee brand. Your son caught him in it. He told us about the brands, didn't he? I'm heading back to your ranch. I'll wait for the sheriff. All right. We'll follow you in. All right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Stay here till I get over by the house.
Keep an eye on him. It's going to be a rough ride, but we'll make it as comfortable as possible. I'll just be glad to get home. We'll uh, get that rig back to you as soon as we can. No hurry, Mr. Cartwright. Me and Julie aren't going anywhere until Tom gets back from the drive. Yeah. You ready, Paul? Yeah, all set. I'd like to thank you for the ski guy you made me, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, well, the least I could do after that good nursing you gave me. Well, uh, really don't know how to say thank you enough. Orv and Fenton could have bled us dry if your son hadn't caught him switching our brands. So let's just say one hand washes the other. Yeah, fair enough. Ladies, we'll see you. Good day, ladies. 